Hello and welcome to the International Pentagon Challenge. My name is Kai Knight and together we'll be embarking on a very special football manager journey where we'll aim to try and win every major international competition in all five continents, forcing our hand to play with hundreds of different types of players and most importantly hopefully create loads of awesome different types of tactics along the way. Once that's complete, only then are we allowed to set our sights on the biggest of all goals, the FIFA World Cup. How many nations will we have to manage until we work our way to the top? How many dodgy names will we have to pronounce along the way? So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. Alright, hello everyone and welcome to episode 80 of the International Pentagon Challenge. It's finally time, we're finally going to get a shot at the Gold Cup. And believe it or not, we kind of had a shot at the uh, Copper America as well. So basically, it turns out, and this is this is you know the amazing thing about this international Pentagon challenge is that I learn as I go along, and I had no idea that sometimes because I'll be honest, I've never watched a Copper America in my life, right? I've sometimes seen highlights and stuff, and it turns out that every Copper America, um, some North American teams also get invited to the Copper America, but because we had the Gold Cup coming up, um, our B team went to the Copper America. And while it would have been maybe funny to try and beat the likes of Argentina and Brazil with our B team and win the uh, <laughs> the Copper America and then go on to win the Gold Cup and defeat two continents with Mexico, um, it kind of seems like the wrong thing to do because we do want to go and you know manage a genuine South American team. Um, also, obviously in the last episode, you guys will have left me off roughly about here after our 2-0 loss to England and we saw of course that Japan won the World Cup. Now after that World Cup there were loads of managerial sackings. Uh, we got offered the Argentina job, the France job, I think those are two jobs we got offered. We definitely got offered the Spain job. I took a screenshot of it, it'll be on screen right now. Um, but you know what guys, look we've come to Mexico to do a job and I don't know whether or not the fact that I applied for them jobs and they've not offered me them jobs will affect me if I apply to them jobs again in the future. Hopefully it won't. I don't think it will. I don't think FM kind of works like that. Um, so yeah, hopefully it doesn't affect us in the nearby future because it would have really been easy to jump ship. But we have basically been unbeaten since you guys last saw us. So a 0-0 draw against Switzerland. We smashed Costa Rica 4-0. Once again, beat Argentina. Uh, I scheduled that friendly against Argentina in on purpose because I wanted to basically see whether or not we could beat them again, basically. And they did play with their first team despite it only being a friendly, and we did beat them again. So, you know, two wins against Argentina does say a lot about you know how good this Mexico side are in terms of how we're playing. Um, I don't want to sound self-centered, but how good I have them playing. We then also beat... Portugal, which again, Portugal on paper, stronger team than us. And despite us being the home team, despite us going 1-0 down, we had the character to fight back and uh, get the win. We then smashed TNT uh, with a nice 4-1 victory. We then beat Chile, who again are a very good team 4-2. We then beat Australia 3-0. I then purposely scheduled the game against Japan, knowing that they are the, basically the World Cup champions, who we beat 3-0, and then we smashed South Korea 2-0. And really, what I want to kind of try and emphasise on before we go into our first Gold Cup game, or games, because it is going to be a uh, double episode, is the fact that we have brought in some newer players, uh, players who you may not have seen before. You'll learn about them in the forthcoming few episodes, but Raimundo Bejarano is certainly one that deserves a bit of a shout. Um, so I have tried to bring in more youngsters into the squad. Arenas won't be with us at the Gold Cup, which is really disappointing because he basically is injured with a cruciate ligament injury. Um, which means that uh, old man, where is he now? I'm not sure if I can find him. He, where is he? Old guy, 
Saldivar, here he is, which means Saldivar takes his spot, even though Saldivar at the age of 33 is the kind of player I was looking to really phase out. Uh, but yeah, so focusing on some of these newer players, uh, Raimundo Bejarano comes into the side very, very fast, really useful coming off the bench, can start games as well, and is left-footed, which makes him basically the next Ruiz, um, and it was really useful playing him in these few games because Martin Ruiz was out injured, and a part of me was kind of like, Maybe Ruiz is going to start, you know, losing it. Um, and then he proved me wrong when he got basically a hat-trick against the world champions in Japan. And then two goals against South Korea. And I think he picked up one or two in some of these other friendlies as well. Other players that I should probably point out who you may uh, not be too familiar with as well include a certain right back in the form of Georges Rangel. So he's really a winger by trade, um, but against weaker opposition, he gives us a little bit more pace, a little bit more technical ability than someone like Hernandez now does at right back. So Hernandez, he's a bit slower, but he's better marking, tackling, work rate. So he's a much better defensive player, so he's kind of maybe the kind of player I'd play against better opposition, especially if most of their assists come down the left-hand side, whilst Rangel is probably the player we might see feature the most in the upcoming group stages, because... He um, is stronger going forwards. Other players you may not know about include Ernesto Gonzalez. You know about this guy, plays for FC Bayern Munich. Actually, you do know about this guy. Um, he's grabbed a few goals in the uh, past few friendlies as well. And you may or may not be familiar with Javier Lucio. I think you may have seen him before. I'm not entirely sure. He comes in as kind of a backup centre-back. Um, really, in terms of the backup centre-back, the first call... Uh, when we need another centre-back, it is between 33-year-old Oscar Trujillo and Javier Lucio as backup for Arellano and Rendon. Angel Gomez as well, who now has, has grey hair because he's getting old. I don't think that was done on purpose, but if it was, well done, SI. I like that. Um, I prefer it a lot more when, you know, the hairstyles change as opposed to the bloody ethnicity of the players. <laughs> um, uh, yes, so he has been out with a broken foot for a while, and it seemed like he wasn't going to actually make the Gold Cup. Um, but as you can see, he could very well return to full fitness soon. It's only a broken foot. He doesn't really need his feet for goalkeeping. So as soon as he is fit again, depending on the performances of Villanueva, who's going to be really our backup goalkeeper, we may see Gomez in goal again. I do kind of still remember the mistakes that Gomez did against England in the World Cup, but, you know, we can't dwell on them at the end of the day. He is um, a very experienced man between the sticks. He's almost our... Buffon, if you think about it that way. Um, other than that, the players you should all really be familiar with. In terms of what our group looks like, that's probably a question you're asking yourselves. You may have caught a glimpse of it. We've been handed quite an easy group. Haiti, Honduras and Panama. Um, so really, I am kind of expecting us to float through this group. We obviously beat Trinidad and Tobago, who were the title holders 4-1. That was why I scheduled that friendly against them. We beat everyone that's come our way. Let's make sure we don't bottle it this time around in this Gold Cup and make the 2035 Gold Cup ours because the last time we won it was a good six years ago. And in a way, I'd really like to move to a new nation <laughs> and uh, you know test the waters somewhere else because we've been with Mexico for a while and just before we dive into this tournament I know the episode is getting longer and longer this is now that is not what my face looks like this is what my face looks like that is also another very annoying bug <laughs> in the game um, yeah this is what we look like now so this is probably the reason why we got offered obviously the Spanish job the French job and whatnot that you'll see in the screenshot of earlier on um, because, you know, uh, our reputation really uh, merits that now. You can see a lot of our stats have also increased as well. Uh, historically, it, I, there, we, there we go. Okay, Brazil, Iran, France, Italy, Spain, Australia. I didn't know that was a thing. This episode, Honduras and Panama, basically, we're much better than these teams. So we're not going to be comprehensive. We're just going to go in there home. I'm really hoping for six points. And if we have six points by the end of this episode, I'll skip the Haiti game and, you know, play that off camera. And hopefully the next episode will be whoever we end up playing in the last 12 or how many teams it ends up being. Two, four, six. In the last, it will be the semi-finals and the semi-quarterfinals. I don't know what it will be. Um, let's play Honduras.
because I don't even know what's coming out of my mouth anymore. <laughs> Okie doke. So as you guys can see, um, our players are all related to each other. They all basically have the same face, which is really disappointing. SI. Uh, so Honduras, as expected, they're playing with this deep 4 2 2 2. Emphasis on the wingers. Now we're going to have to change how we play a little bit. We're going to have to look, try and stretch the pitch a little more. And most of our emphasis, most of the time, are in the central areas of the pitch. So we are going to have both fullbacks on attacking. That way we can try and double up using the extra man in midfield with people pushing forward out wide because they play with a flat back four and they've got the two defensive midfielders centrally so I don't think we're going to be able to play through them we are going to have to basically be wary of the counter attack so we may see the deep line play make a change to an anchor man if we need to um, but we'll worry about that later I want to see how we start the game off first and uh, interestingly enough this gold cup is being played in america i'm not sure if it's always played in america but i've just realized that now so hopefully that gives us good luck because for some reason as the mexican national team we always play our international friendlies in america i'm not sure what that's about um yeah let's jump in okay then here we go so nice to see the league table is still open from the world cup and uh yeah so mexico versus honduras so as you guys saw um i mean to be honest if you've basically made it this long in the international pentagon challenge you'll be more than aware of the fact that us completely um you know dominating our friendlies in the build-up to a big tournament isn't really something new to us unfortunately um we just need to make sure that our performance um at the actual tournament itself Oh, go on. He's going to miss this. Oh, he's finished. Well done, Martin. Well done. There we go. One minute, 26 seconds in. We have the lead. Um, but, yeah, I've completely forgot what I was saying now. Uh, they've got Diego injured already. He's actually their left winger, I believe. Um, one of their stronger players. So it's nice to see that um, they're injured. Or he's injured, rather. So Martinez to Colin. I was disappointed that Arenas... Oh, go on. 2-0? No. No. Disappointed that Arenas obviously got injured and won't really be accompanying us to this tournament. But, um, you know, I just kind of felt like it would be a good opportunity for a young, exciting player, um, you know, a play for an exciting team like Spurs to really have a shot at a tournament like this and really try and make a name for himself and cement his spot in the uh, national team. It's Urbe shoots and it's saved by Morales. But... Cruciate ligament injury, you know, tough one. Um, also, in terms of who we're playing up front, now, you guys know we've got Gonzalez and that other bloke um, whose name is far too complicated for me to, to even... Oh, good finish. To try and pronounce. <laughs> um, but I've actually ended up going, as you can probably tell by now, with the kind of experienced duo of Ruiz and Iturbe. And that's honestly just based on performances. Um, and also because, particularly against these weaker sides, I feel like late on in games, we would benefit up against these weaker, tired defenders to throw on the young, pacey lads to have a bit of fun, you know what I mean? Even though, to be honest, some of these old-age pensioners in this side, one of which is probably Rincon, plays for Borussia Dortmund nowadays, um, should have really hit the back of the net from there, um, seem to be doing pretty well uh, in terms of, you know, um, nice one-two pass and play and... You know, using their pace up against the uh, flat Honduras back four. And that's a stupid goal to concede that. I think that's probably their first shot on goal there, Honduras. But as much as I hate to say it, we're kind of accustomed... Yeah, it is their first shot on target. We're kind of accustomed to seeing that kind of thing um, from, from, from the Mexicans. So it is what it is. I'm not really too worried because we have plenty of quality in this side nonetheless. We maybe could have made changes to prevent that. So Rincon finds Rangel. To Iturbe. It's nice football from the Mexicans. Through ball to Chavez. His cross doesn't find anyone though. Chavez has been disappointing, I must say. And now Honduras are taking advantage. Oh no. Ah. We should have made changes, maybe. That that is really annoying that. I mean, if I were to make changes, I'd have probably put one of our fullbacks on support and told the lads to retain possession. But I'm not entirely sure that maybe would have prevented those goals specifically. Um, we've misplaced a lot of passes. Oh, oh. There's a goal. Um, yeah, I don't think we really deserve it. 
But I think bring them in at half time, give them a bit of a rollicking, and really make sure that their heads kind of stay in the game. I'm really disappointed to concede two goals, but what's important is that we have the lead again. Okay, so we've made some tweaks, looking to retain possession a little bit better. Chavez, who, you know, whilst he's had some really good performances uh, in the friendlies, building up some of these games, um, I think given how Honduras equalised, it is important that um, he kind of looks to wander forward a little bit less, even though it kind of reduces our passing options in the final third. We've also changed our opposition instructions around a little bit. Uh, try and take advantage of the two Honduras players who are injured. Right, we've got to play it safe now. Uh, Trujillo's still recovering from injury. That's one of the other reasons why I made sure Lucio was in the squad. Uh, so he can come on because Rendon does have a bit of a history of getting sent off. And uh, I think Gonzalez can come on down this right-hand side and we can try and really utilise him uh, and get balls forward towards him. And so can Hernandez, who... Uh, can can remain on attack. Hopefully, he can link up with Gonzalez. Gonzalez is going to give us um, a lot of pace up front. Corner, though. Romero is going to manage to clear it. Funes back into the box, and it's just over the bar from Alvarez there. I mean, yeah, quality over quantity at the end of the day. And while we've had the, qu the quantity, um, Honduras have certainly uh, had quality in the final third. So, Chavez with the ball towards Gonzalez. You see, that was the kind of thing I was talking about where we can utilise Gonzalez's pace. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't get the finish. Lucio heads the ball down to our playmaker in Colin. I'm expecting him to grab a few goals for sure this tournament. And there we go. That's why we bring on uh, the pacey player in the form of Gonzalez. It did kind of look maybe potentially offside to me, but... Uh, you see what I mean about these misplaced passes this game? I mean, it's like me me men mentally um, we got some complacent players here in, in this team. Um, tell them to concentrate. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's good that you can still grind these wins out. I'm not happy with the two goals we conceded, but what's important is that we still managed to put four goals past them, uh, which says a lot about how good we are going forward, and it could very well become five. Um, but no, Ruiz shoots from a distance. Because these games, teams like Honduras, especially given how they're playing, they will look to sit back and you know play really, really tight. Um, and in the end, we didn't actually make specific changes to basically aim to get the ball, like exploit the wide flanks, because to be fair, we had a 2-0 lead at one point. Um, so we didn't really need to. But I do feel like until the kind of point where they caught us on the counter attack, we looked pretty comfortable throwing not one but two fullbacks forwards. Maybe if I had selected exploit the flanks, we'd have seen the likes of Hernandez and Rangel. And that was a terrible header. I get on the ball more in wide areas and more direct balls kind of into the wide areas. But um, we won the game, and that is the important thing. And hopefully, we can win our next game, which I believe is against Panama. And uh, we can then basically put the group stages to bed. So, Panama um, got the win against Haiti in the 91st minute. So, that's a good result for them. I am kind of fancying them to maybe finish second in the group. Mainly on the basis that they're in the World Cup in real life. So, they're probably better than Honduras. But I think Honduras um, have actually been to World Cups before. So, what do I know? Uh, anyways, there we go. There's one win. Let's get another. I'll be back. Okay, here we are then. So, um, just an update. Honduras beat Haiti 4-1. So, you know, um, the group is going to go down to the wire. And that's why it's really important we beat Panama, who are currently really uh, in second place after the first um, bunch of fixtures, obviously. Because we both won our first games. Whoever wins this game basically guarantees qualification from the group so this is a really important game for us um, and if we can win it it means that we can rest some of our major players uh, against Haiti because they'll be playing for absolutely nothing and we won't really be playing for much. Uh, Guzman comes in at left back as opposed to the first game because Chavez is 33 he is our only left back I'll admit you know maybe that's poor choice of players for me but to be honest we don't really have any 
better left backs. So we have to deal with the 33 year old we have because regens are rarely left backs nowadays for some strange reason. Um, they're playing very narrow, so we're going to go a little bit more direct, play relatively wide ourselves. We'll get Jose Rangel forward as much as possible on the overlap, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Here we go then, second match of uh, the 2035? Yeah, I think it's 2035 Gold Cup, I can't quite remember to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, here we go. It's going to be an interesting game, because um, it's been quite a while since I last really came up against a team that plays narrowly. I mean, really, they play very similarly to us, except we play with two strikers, and um, they kind of play with the uh, attacking midfielder. But 20 minutes in, we've not really created much, it has to be said. Rincon to Iturbe, who plays Ruiz through. I think he's just about lacking the pace to really beat those two centre-backs there, but we can maybe look to tweak things around just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, we're playing as wide as we can, as you can see. Uh, I'm actually going to try and exploit both flanks this time round. i uh, take dribble less off as well, and uh, yeah, we'll just basically go from there, see if that allows us to stretch play a little bit better and create more opportunities. Um, our possession numbers have begun to really decrease after making that change which is what you'd expect because we're no longer aiming to play through the middle passing is going to become more difficult but hopefully if we can isolate our wing backs um, up against theirs we'll create goal scoring opportunities ladies and gentlemen i'm not quite sure how we've scored that but it's gone in um we all saw Carius in the champions league final i like how whenever like something goes wrong in the football manager match engine now the justification is just always going to be we all saw Carius in the in the Champions League final, e.g. Bruce bloody Grobelar version two. There we go, nice ball to Ruiz. Can we make it two nil and actually hold on to the lead this time round? Iturbe shoots, and that's a very good save from Aguirre. Who do you think is going to win the World Cup this year? Let me know in the comments down below. Ruiz, keep that in towards ahead of Iturbe. Rangel can whip it back in, and Colin will finish. Oh, he's put it into the side netting. Thought Colin would finish there. Some of our passing at this tournament has been really questionable. Ball forward to Iturbe. I mean, that that was that really a shove? It looked really soft to me. I'm pretty sure Iturbe has also scored every penalty he's taken for us. So fingers crossed, he's gonna miss. Well, that was anticlimactic. Is that how you say it? the Panamese? The Panamese? Maybe the Panese? I'm not sure. Oreo's through. Oreo scores. Where is our defence this tournament? <laughs> Once again, the opposition's first shot on goal, they score. Okay, so we've made some tweaks. We've turned Guzman into more of an inverted um, uh, fullback. See if that can help us maybe get an extra passing option centrally, which kind of draws the opposition in and makes it easier for us to switch play out wide towards um, uh, Rangel. Hopefully he crosses a little bit better than that last cross we saw from him. That's a nice cross towards the head of Gonzalez. As you can tell, he's also come on for Iturbe, whose rating just basically crashed straight down after missing that penalty. Three clear-cut chances for Ruz, only one for Panama. Um, and again, kind of feels like it's only going to be a matter of time, and we've been given another penalty. So this time round, it seems like Oh, it won't let me change it. I missed it. Rodrigo Rincon is going to take the penalty. And I said he was going to score the last one and he missed. So he's going to score. He's going to miss this one. He took it before I even say it. I can't even speak anymore. He took it before I could even even say it. There we go. That's a good That's that's a good goal. Um, now let's not make you know the same kind of style of mistake that we did against... Um, oh my god, it was like five minutes ago. Honduras, that's that's them. Let's not make the same type of mistake. Um, it means we'll have made our three subs. It's not really ideal, uh, to be honest. Because Zamudio, well, to be fair, all of our kind of central midfielders are feeling a little bit cream-crackered. But if we can get this win, then... None of them need to play in the next match, basically. That's how confident I am of beating Haiti. That's what I'll be saying when we're 1-0 up in the 80th minute and they counter-attack us and we concede another sloppy goal. Oh, that's good. That's good. Ruiz is through here. 
needs to just find the... And it's another penalty. I mean... Look, I mean... You can't say that we don't deserve the click or the, the the penalties. At this point right now, we've had four click or chances to their one. Um, but hopefully here, Rincon can make it uh, two penalties in a single game. He can, should really have been a hat-trick of penalties in the game throughout. Um, I think we need a new penalty taker, ladies and gents. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of what you get when you've got a cool, calm, collected, experienced head in your squad like Mr... Rodrigo Rincon. Senor Rincon. Oh, what a goal. Take a bow, son. Eduardo Arellano, 25 yards out. Fantastic free kick. And uh, there was one point in this game where it looked like we could have potentially been down and out. But with five clear cut chances to their one, the FM gods decided to smile upon us, which is nice for a change. So there we go. We've confirmed qualification. The Haiti game is basically a nothing game. So that's going to be played off camera which means the next episode will probably be against... Ooh, well, I mean, it's too early to tell, really, but chances are it's going to be against either Jamaica or the US or Canada and I want to say Costa Rica, but we all know how good Guatemala have been recently, you know, especially in them World Cup qualifiers. So it's too early to say because Claudio Albizuriz is doing a fantastic job as manager of Guatemala and they were really unfortunate not to qualify for the World Cup. But we will leave that there. It's already been a pretty long episode. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.